I'm Alexander Pearl at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, and I presented data at this ASH meeting regarding the topic of gilteritinib efficacy in patients who'd had prior mitostorin and serafinib. Uh, really to get at the question, which is increasingly patients are treated with one or both of these agents in frontline therapy, and gilteritinib is not currently approved in frontline treatment of AML, but only after relapse. So does it retain its activity in the setting of patients who get frontline tyrosine kinase inhibitors among patients with PLID3 mutated AML? Um, so the data that I presented, um, and there's actually two presentations at ASH, uh, one that I had done as an oral presentation and another that uh, Yazan Newman had, uh, from Northwestern had presented, um, cover similar uh, areas, which, which is really this patient population. What we found in the data that I presented, and I think his uh, talk was very uh, similar in terms of its findings, is that uh, while there's a relatively small number of patients who've had prior mitostorin or serafinib who've been studied, uh, gilteritinib maintains its activity in that setting. So that's the kind of top line finding. Uh, my presentation was culled from data from the Chrysalis phase one, two study of gilteritinib, as well as the Admiral phase three study where gilteritinib was compared to salvage chemotherapy in patients with primary uh, refractory or first relapse of FLT3 mutated AML. And what we found was that uh, while there was only, you know, I think about a quarter of patients on the Chrysalis study and maybe only about 12% of patients on Admiral who had had prior mitostorin or serafinib, uh, the response rate in terms of the composite complete remission rate for gilteritinib was only slightly lower than that of the uh, entire study population or really the patients who had not had prior TKI. Uh, about 40% for patients with prior mitostorin or serafinib, and more like 50% for patients who had not had prior TKI. And the overall survivals were similar for these populations, maybe slightly lower in those who'd had prior TKI. Um, and lastly, we did a comparison of the patients on Admiral who had had uh, prior TKI uh, and were randomized to gilteritinib versus those randomized to standard chemotherapy and both a higher response rate and statistically improved uh, survival was seen in the gilteritinib arm. So to look at that comparator in terms of other reasonable alternatives, the data would support using gilteritinib in that setting. Lastly, for the question of patients who had had primary refractory disease to frontline TKI concerning uh, containing therapies such as those who don't respond to frontline mitostorin, uh, we looked at the outcome of these patients in terms of prior TKI um, and no prior TKI, and the responses and survivals were uh, really quite similar on the Admiral study. A median survival of uh, 10 months was seen in pretty much both of these groups. Um, so if the question is, uh, if you've not responded to frontline therapy containing mitostorin, should gilteritinib be your next choice? I think the answer is from these data, yes, uh, that is more than appropriate. It seems to be uh, uh, preferred in that setting based on available data. Um, and again, we've not done a, a, a large study in this uh, specific population, but the available data do support the efficacy of gilteritinib uh, in, this, in this context. 